on this episode of Doing the Most, after over a year of tasting, testing, and trialing, we present to you our recipe for a hopped hydromel. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast, big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. I have been working on this since before last summer, a year ago, and finally after really, really working to refine and perfect the process, I came up with what is a relatively simple recipe that in the end has a bit of a complicated twist when it comes to the hops. Now. I'll explain this later, but you can do a single aroma hop version of this recipe. So you have one hop, Centennial for bittering, and one hop, your choice kind of for aroma. But what we found through tasting and blending and really honing things in is that a blend of four aroma hops, so five hops total, is really, really excellent and in our opinion, perfection. In this recipe. More on that in a bit. So if you primarily make mead or wine or cider you may not know a lot about hops and I'm not going to get into the full details of how hops work here but what you need to know is that boiling your hops especially for an extended period of time isomerizes the alpha acids in the hops essentially turning them into bitter compounds that's how you get really bitter beers is a big hops load boiled for a long time. In this recipe, we are only boiling our hops for 15 minutes just to give it a quick charge of bittering and it gives it kind of an undercurrent of flavor that we found important to making a hopped hydromel. Another use of hops is for aroma and so barely any heat applied or no heat at all applied to those hops can help infuse the aromatic compounds into your mead. And so here we're doing a dry hop edition of aroma hops three days before packaging. So three days before it goes into bottles or kegs, you add your hops. And this helps us get those aromatic compounds, but also to retain those aromatic compounds once it's in the bottle. And oxygen management with aroma hops is really important because oxygen getting to those aroma compounds from your hops can make them just go away. And so you really wanna be careful not to oxidize this hydromel. And so in a keg, that's pretty easy because you're doing a lot of oxygen management by purging the headspace with carbon dioxide and keeping it under gas so oxygen can't really get to it. But if you're going to be bottle conditioning this and it does need to be served carbonated, you're going to really want to consider doing something for oxygen management. And I would recommend adding some potassium metabisulfite. Generally, if you look around homebrewing subreddits and discords, you'll find that 25 to 35 parts per million is what's recommended for potassium metabisulfite for managing aromatic hops and, and trying to alleviate some of the oxidization problems that can happen with those hops. If you're using, for example, Campton tablets, that looks like just over one and a half Campton tablets for a five gallon batch. So not much at all, definitely not enough to inhibit the yeast from doing your bottle conditioning for you but enough that it can help scavenge some of that oxygen that could be detrimental to these very, very delicate compounds. So there was a lot of experimentation that went into developing what it's gonna look like a very simple recipe and process, but that involves several five gallon batches where I did various amounts of bittering hops for various different boil times. And I also played around with some aroma hops, single hop aroma hops in those five gallon batches. Once I kind of had a process dialed in, then it was time to make the leap to a 10 gallon batch that would be split amongst 10 different aroma hops. The goal being to eventually come together with a couple of meat enthusiasts and blend those to find what we believed was the perfect blend of aromatic hops for this recipe. To choose what hops would be part of that experiment, I let my Discord community decide based on the hops that I had on hand, and they picked 10 hops. 
And I'm really proud of them because they picked 10 that are all a little bit different from each other. Some were pinier and more resinous and sappy. Others were very floral and fruity and melony. Still others were grapey or they were citrusy and pithy. So we had a lot to play with when we got down to blending. So I brewed the 10 gallons. I then split that into 10 one gallon batches. I added 10 different aromatic hops and then I bottle conditioned all 10 batches separately. I brought my friends Garrett from Man Made Mead and David, who you've seen on the channel before, together. And we spent five, almost six hours in the backyard drinking hopped hydromels and doing blending to try and figure out what we liked. And we ended up coming up with kind of a, a quantity a percentage, if you will, of what four different hops worked really well together. And that's what we're gonna present to you in this video. So there were four hops that really worked well together. But as you can see from our rankings out of 100, there were several that really performed well as single hop versions of this. If you're wanting to reduce your cost out brewing this recipe, or I guess brewing this process, you might look at some of those higher performing hops or similar hops, something that is an equivalent if uh, these hops are not available to you. And I'll put some links down in the description for places you can go to look for substitute hops or similar hops. There's a lot of different resources out there for you to peruse. So let's get started by taking a quick look at our ingredients. The ingredients for our hoppy hydromel are one ounce of centennial hops, six pounds of orange blossom honey, five grams of wine tannin, white wine yeast or USO5, here we're using EC1118, 10 grams of Fermate O for your nutrient, and water to five gallons. And then right before packaging, we're gonna throw in one ounce of Aroma Hops. Our preferred blend is 5.7 grams of Laurel, 5.7 grams of Nelson, 5.7 grams of Calypso, and 11.4 grams of Citra. Together, this will equal one ounce of Aroma Hops, but we're measuring it in grams so we can be very, very specific. We're also gonna be back sweetening with 12 ounces of honey in this five gallon batch. Okay, I know that this has been a lot of information up front, but I do think it's important to provide some context on how we arrived at this. I have used so much time and honey and hops to get here. I'm very proud of this recipe, very happy with how it turned out. It's stupid refreshing. And so let's take a look at how it's done. The process that we developed for this hopped hydromel is actually really, really simple. and starts with putting one ounce of bittering hops in a straining bag. Here we're using Centennial hops, I've also done this with Cascade, and it turns out fairly similar. These hops are going to be boiled in one gallon of our brewing water for 15 minutes. And this just gives a slight, slight bittering charge to this mead. And that's important because our palate kind of associates the flavor of hops with bittering, but also our palates generally really like the aromas, those big florals and citrus notes and piney notes that you can get out of hops. So having a little bit of bittering as a backbone and having a bunch more hops as your aroma hops helps kind of give a holistic hops flavor to this hydromel. So we get our water going and once that is boiling, the hops go in and we're gonna cover that for 15 minutes. And now, I didn't seal my bag super well, so a little bit of the hops particulate crept out of my bag during that 15 minute boil. Whoopsie. And that's fine, I just decided I would pour it through another bag to make sure that any other particulate was strained out. We don't want anything in here that's gonna end up making it like grassy. So I just poured it through this big brewing bag just to make sure I strained out all those last little particles that might have left my bag. So lesson learned really make sure you cinch up and tie off those straining bags. Then we're gonna to top that up with another few gallons of water. We wanna get it fairly close to the four gallon mark, and then we're going to add our honey. And I'm starting here with about five and a half pounds of honey. 
our goal is to get this just over five gallons of volume in this bucket so we can rack off all the particulate at the bottom. And so here we're trying to hit a target gravity of 1.042 to 1.045, somewhere in that range. So I added the honey and I added some water and I added the honey and I added some water until I got to that target gravity of 1.045. Then our yeast goes in. Airlock goes on and we'll revisit it in 24 hours. Now you're probably thinking, what about the tannin? Yep, I forgot to add the tannin. So that tannin really should go in at the beginning, but adding it in at the 24 hour mark isn't gonna hurt anything. And then we front load our Fermade O for yeast nutrient. So the Fermi dough just goes right in. We close that back up and let it ride until it ferments out. And it should stop around 1.000. So three days before packaging, we are gonna add in our aroma hops, which again, all together is one ounce of aroma hops. Then set yourself a reminder on your cell phone to come back in three days and package it up, whether you're bottling or kegging. And you're gonna see some bubbles in there. That's just CO2 escaping out the top from that hops blanket. I chose to stabilize mine with potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate. And then I added my honey for back sweetening. Then I'm gonna rack all that hydromel on top of the honey, purge the headspace with carbon dioxide, and shake the hell out of that keg to make sure all of the stabilizers and honey are mixed throughout. That goes under gas, and I am pressurizing this to about 2.4 volumes of CO2. You basically just want it to be as sparkling as any light beer. When it comes to balancing, there is a chance that you might want a little bit of a pop of freshness in here. The carbonation does provide a little bit of that bite that you might associate with like a crisp soda, but you might want to add like citric acid or tartaric acid, maybe two or three grams across a five gallon batch just to brighten and liven it up just a little bit. I chose not to in this final recipe, not to include citric or tartaric acid because I don't feel like it needs it. But if you do feel like there is just a little bit of something missing in the acid balance, you might try that. If you're bottle conditioning, you're going to want to use erythritol, a non-fermentable sweetener, instead of honey. Because if you use honey and you try and bottle condition, you are going to end up with bottle bombs. And I tend to find that by weight, erythritol is basically as sweet as honey. So since we're using 12 ounces of honey in a five gallon batch here, you would want to use 12 ounces of erythritol in a five gallon batch if you're bottle conditioning. But as always, you want to sweeten to your taste. And we just found that this needed enough sweetness to bring some of that honey character back to the mead. And so you might start with uh, eight or maybe 10 ounces and work your way up from there. That's not going to be too sweet generally, but if you're going over a pound of honey or erythritol in a five gallon batch, you're probably getting into kind of a really cloying situation. That's probably not going to play too well with the hops. We liked, 12 ounces. So we're here to taste the final product. Yeah, this is and a big video. This is a <laughs> it's, it's been a long, <laughs> long project, but you got to be a part of the blending process. Yes. What was that like tasting through 10 very different aroma hops? So I personally have never tried that many hops, especially in a row. So, you know, that was a very unique experience. But it was so interesting to see the different flavors, aromatics, tastes, all the things you get from those hops. And then, you know, looking at the package, package and it says this, and then tasting and going, yeah, it says this, or, you know, picking up other notes. Mm -hmm. But obviously, <laughs> there's a reason there's a million different kinds of hops, because they are different. And so this was a lot of fun. Um, the whole process of, like, which one pairs best was also kind of tough because I mean it was know, hours of blending. Yes, yeah, some of them are like are like this standalone is great, 
or standalone isn't great, but mixed with this guy. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of like just pouring. It was a lot of fun though. It was a good time. Yeah, it's interesting. The A couple of the ones that we used are, are in the, the top ones that we had rated as like the best. There's one that's like near the bottom, mm -hmm. but blending together, it brought something to the table that the other ones didn't yeah. have. It's really interesting. Uh, and you know, like you said, there are some that stand alone on mm -hmm. their own. And so there are recommendations, obviously earlier in the video for that. If you don't want to buy five different <laughs> hops for one <laughs> mead, yeah. maybe you could just get two. Yeah. So here it is, finally ready. After a year and a half of testing, we have the perfect, hopefully perfect, hop hydromel. Looks good. Nice little carb. Nice and clear. Very clear. Yeah, I, I don't know if the hops are responsible for that because I didn't put anything in here to clear it. No sparkloid. Normally, no, I think it's clear. opposite with hops, right? It's hops normally make it hazy. So. <laughs> I don't know, but you you pop this in the keg, and in like three days, all that crap drops to the bottom. I mean, that's been that's my experience. True. It's like every a cold time. crashing. So, mm -hmm. all right, here we go. Here we go. Aromatic wise, it is um, it is super complex to me, but it has a lot of berry. It has like this berry aromatic in there. Then mm -hmm. it has some citrus that's floating around. Yeah, there's a little bit of like a honeydew melon, yeah, uh -huh. kind of. There's so much fruitiness to this. <laughs> that was one thing about all the hops is some of them are so fruity. Mm -hmm. It's like you feel like you actually put some sort of melon or berry yeah, like or fruit something. Juice. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's not. It's the hop. It's wild. It's wild how a plant that just makes these little flowery cones can produce so many different flavor and aromatic compounds. Yeah, it smells great. So unlike the ones that we did in the tasting trials, this was back sweetened with honey, mm -hmm. just lightly. It's like 12 ounces in a five gallon batch, but you get that, that big fresh bittering and then like on the exhale, all those aromatics. Was this orange blossom or? It's orange blossom okay. honey, yeah. And I ended up back sweetening with blueberry blossom honey because mm -hmm. I was out of orange blossom. Yeah, it's got a nice, a little bit of bitterness from your your bittering side hops but then all those aromatics from the nose are also on the palate mm -hmm. berry and the citrus which is also part of the orange blossom honey yeah there's a nice pithiness uh -huh. in there it's got a little bit of bite mm -hmm. but it's also got sweetness to combat so it's like a good balance i could see how somebody might want this a little bit sweeter than this yeah I like this though because it kind of puts it in that almost like a light beer kind of realm but you <laughs> still have all those big fruity pithy like just like bordering on resinous kind yeah. of hop flavors it's really there's so much going on in there mm -hmm. it is it's very complex but it's super crushable and i mean this is definitely reminds me of like a summertime sitting out in the backyard you know just drinking this i do think what's important here is that honey is really helpful to this character and mm -hmm. of course you can bottle carb i feel like bottle carbing helps but like the honey and then you can't back sweeten with your honey, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and one of the things we discussed while we were, we were doing the blending was that that orange blossom honey also brings a big bright mm -hmm. character to this. <laughs> and that's kind of clutch to balancing this recipe. Because yep. I, I tossed around, well, what if we switched out the honey? Mm -hmm. And you and David were both like, no, you have to go with the same honey because it complements all the hops so well. Yeah, I definitely, yeah. I, as soon as you change <clears throat> the honey varietal, of course, some things could possibly change mm -hmm. here, but Overall, I would say those hops by themselves pair really well together. You know, changing honey varietal, who knows what that would do. <laughs> right. Well, That's I a whole other test. <laughs> what we definitely learned here is there's a lot of, like, a lot of room to play in the, the hop sandbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we, we tried all kinds of different hops blending them together. Mm -hmm. These were just the four that we felt like brought the roundest flavor profile. Mm -hmm. But again, like you could do this as a single hop now that we have the process refined with Citra or Nelson or Waidi, yep. any of those like really flavorful mm -hmm. hops and still get something really nice out of yeah. this. Yeah. I know it's daunting to buy hops. I, <laughs> I just bought some recently and you're like, man, this is kind of expensive. But the nice thing about your recipe is not you're not using all of them, a whole ounce in, in this. You're using small amounts and then you freeze them and then you come back, True. you know, so. You can buy enough hops, you can do this like three or four times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Garrett. Yeah. Check out Man Made Mead. If you have not seen the channel, you probably have though. 
But just in case somehow you've landed here and not there, go check out his channel and subscribe and support the... Because you're doing all kinds of experimentation, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all the time. It's a good time. Uh, and, of course, you can subscribe here. Join our Discord community. There's all kinds of nonsense <laughs> happening there day to day, especially today. And uh, follow us on Instagram, make mead, enjoy hops. And if you've got recommendations on hops that we didn't try here, mm -hmm. throw them down in the comments because I'm always looking for something new I can ask for at the brew shop. Until next time, happy brewing, happy mead making, and cheers. <laughs>